Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Edicity. Upper left hand corner, we got Aegis starting as the pink Zerg, bot or sorry, bottom left hand corner, we got Aegis starting as the pink Zerg. Upper left hand corner, we got Crocon starting as the blue Zerg. What map is this? I should have looked at that. It is Circuit Breakers. Something I do quite often. This is BSL 17, Hasu League, round of 32. Group G final match of the losers match between the two. So whoever loses here is eliminated. Uh, tied up one and one. Pretty good matches thus far. I do want to point out someone in chat. Richard has the wonderful YouTube username and he recently gave a fun comment. He is Social Justice Warrior out on YouTube. I think people sometimes make fun of Social Justice Warrior, but if you actually stop and listen to the words and visualize it quite a bit, it creates kind of a cool visual if you, if, uh, if you, if you, I, you know, you just see like a brutish bohemian dude with like a pickaxe like spiking a robber baron through the head or something like that. John Brown or something like that. Anyway. <laughs> uh, politics aside, we have... I guess it's not really politics, though. We got a spawning pool dropping upper left-hand corner. We will not drag that into brutal casting. We will keep it pristine right this second. Overlord opener from Aegis. We'll see. This could be dangerous for Aegis. If Aegis goes for the... So it's a four-player map. If he goes for the 12 hatchery, although Crocon might have ended up blowing up his major advantage here. He saw that there was no Overlord caught mid-position, so now he's readjusting its trajectory, which could put him in a deficit. In the meantime, he's gone spawning pool and gas. In base hatchery once again, meaning we're going to have a larva advantaged Aegis. And this could be, depending on how this plays out, there's still ways for Crocon to be okay in this. But producing a slew of Zerglings like this right the second without having an, inf uh, an informative direction to send those Zerglings is not the play here. Because Aegis, as you see, one advantage of having this in base hatchery is you can produce eight Zerglings quite rapidly and insufficient, uh, insufficient time to deal with this. And on top of that, Crocon does not have the visual location. So I have a feeling he's gonna end up sending these Zerglings either the cross position bottom right or top right, which is gonna give Aegis plenty of time to get that spawning pool up and the, the Zerglings in play, presuming he saves these larvae and doesn't try to play it sneaky, which is gonna give him the larva lead, which is gonna give him the Zergling lead, which is going to, yeah. And so now Crocon, unfortunately, man, he's played really well, honestly. Although I hear he is a BM player, which gives someone to root against. Overlord speed now generating. And we have the eight Zerglings in production. And he is, he's got a lot of Zerglings, but he's still losing more time. The one advantage, oh, he, and he's got to lose the advantage as well, because very likely this Overlord, well, it's still not out of Crocon's field yet. Potentially, Aegis could scuff this. Although I still think he's going to see all of these Zerglings incoming with this Overlord. So now he sees all of those Zerglings, which lets him know just clog up the ramp, build Zerglings of his own, and he should be able to counter this. Layer dropping, second hatchery, opposite end. Actually, the layer a lot earlier for Crocon. He's also he's dropping an interior base creep colony, so he wants to dedicate a lot of Zerglings. I wonder if he's just presuming, and I like what Aegis did this time. He's again hiding the Zerglings to the rear, but he has... This is a trap! An Overlord died somewhere, or sorry, it looked like there was a missed Overlord, it looks like, potentially, maybe intentionally, I'm not sure, from Crocon. To sneak this, the Zerglings moving out for Aegis as Zergling speed. I'm not sure if he skipped Zergling speed or not. I wasn't paying attention, but the Zerglings getting absolutely decimated on the front. No Sunken Colony produced. Crocon now dropping a Sutton Colony behind the spawning pool. That's going to deny a lot of patches still potentially. Two Zerglings splitting off. Four being left, but this is still plenty. And, an, and I forgot about this. Aegis didn't have position. But now he should know. Where is he sending these Zerglings, though? What's going on? He's got he's got the, the visual. Is he just checking the additional bases? This Overlord has got it spotted. Okay, now he's redrawing. Maybe he was just distracted by Zerglings in the main. I might have missed a uh, drone kill, but anyway. I don't want to say comedy of errors, but there's errors that are maybe giving an opportunity for Crocon to sneak right back into this. Creek Colony is going to be able to complete. The Zerglings grouping up. This is still a massive amount of Zergling. The Sunk Colony's not yet finished. And this is still 
potentially a lot of damage that can be wreaked from Aegis. Let's see if Aegis engages, however. Feels like that's a rhyme. Spawning pool, or sorry, something colony finishes. Zerglings interspersed. Aegis still up a drone. Able to kill a little bit there. Now running forward and dedicating. A lot of the Zerglings not able to get into the attack pattern. That first something colony is certainly going to drop. And Aegis looks like he's got plenty of Zerglings left over. Let's see if the, how many drones drop in the meantime. So it's 8 versus 11. It looks like the Zerglings also going to be in sufficient numbers to take out that something colony to the north. So despite the slight error of moving the moving to the top right-hand corner, it looks like Aegis is going to be able to finish this off. Oh, that's a difficult way to go out. Final match goes to Aegis. He advances to the final match where we're going to see him go up against Hedgick, which could be quite the match. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Regardless, thanks for listening.